Well, um, you have a little, hope you have this uh, little sheet here to fill out. If you, uh, and did everyone get a communion? Because today is Communion Sunday. Anyone did not receive one? You put your hand up, the ushers will get to you. Over here, ushers, we need a communion. Anybody? Over here too. We're missing a few. So they are, I can't see too good with the lights. When you sit here, never look up. It'll be a major mistake. Uh, over here as well. So if anyone missed communion, just get your hands up. The ushers will get to you. I can't see good in the balcony. I know you're up there. I just can't see you too good. Yeah. Okay. How are we doing? All right. Great. Well, our pastors <clears throat> are in a Sunday sermon series entitled Faith, Hope, and Love. And our, <coughs> excuse me, our foundation scripture in this series is 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13, out of the Amplified Bible. Now, there's two Amplified translations. This is the newer Amplified translation. And it says here, now there remain faith, abiding trust in God and His promises, hope, confident expectation of eternal salvation, Love, unselfish love for others, growing out of God's love for me. These three, the great, the choicest graces, but the greatest is, these is love. Now, that's on your memory verse there for the page. If you could underline for me on your page there where it says, hope, confident expectation of eternal salvation. Hold that thought because we'll get back to that. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you today in the name of Jesus that things would be imparted to us, Father, by your Spirit, not from men, but that, Lord God, we would leave here with that greater expectation in us, Father, and that faith would lay a hold of that expectation, that, Father God, in the days ahead, uh, we would manifest your will in and through our lives. And we thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. So today I have the second part of this triad, faith, hope, and love, on hope. Now, there's a lot can be said on the topic of hope from the Word of God. It's an immense topic. So there are some important points I want to make today up front regarding hope. So before we start to look at the 1 Corinthians 13 verse, I want to center around today on what this verse says about hope. And I'm going to stick with the Amplified Translation today. Um, in Hebrews chapter 1 verse, uh, chapter 11 verse 1, it tells us that faith makes hope a real substance. Let's read that. Now faith is the assurance, the title deed, I like that, confirmation of things hoped for divinely granted, and the evidence of things not seen, the conviction of their reality. Faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by the physical senses. Ooh, there's a lot here. There's a lot here regarding uh, what faith will do to hope. It gives us a conviction that they're real. It uh, comprehends what, what we seem not to be able to comprehend in the area of hope by our physical senses. Our physical senses fail us when it comes to understanding hope, it appears. So our hope here we find is from God, and we see here in this verse, it's a divine guarantee. I think whatever God guarantees is, is, is pretty good, can be trusted. Amen. Hope is a divine guarantee, so in faith makes it a title deed, like I own it, it's mine. I have what I hope for. Amen. I got it. And... Um, <clears throat> There's an old, old story, I, I think it was Smith Wigglesworth, but I remember who he, he, he was, great man of faith and miracles earlier in this uh, 20th century. I think, I think it was him, he had visited a, a bedside of a woman that was very sick, she was elderly, uh, and um, he, uh, I think part of the, her illness was due to she lived in poverty, and she was very malnutrition, the issue. And... Um, so he had said to her, uh, as he's talking to her, what's that on your wall? And she said, oh, that was given to me by the man I worked for. I was his maid. He's passed away. Do you know what that says? I don't know how to read. It's a stock title. You're an incredibly wealthy woman. Dying of malnutrition. Didn't have the title deed in her hand. She didn't know what she was reading couldn't read. 
Faith makes that title deed readable to us. I know what I got. Faith is the title deed that makes that hope real. How about that? So what we see here is our hope from God is a divine guarantee. Faith is my title deed to prove that I have it. And when we see here in the Amplified Bible, this is your first fill in the blank if you're doing those, hope is a thing divinely granted. Got to get that. It's a spiritual thing, a grace from God to us that faith can lay a hold of. Now that's kind of serious if this is a divinely granted thing. Let's go a little further here with the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 5, verse 5. He gives us more information. He says, such hope in God's promises. Oh, that's big. Such hope in God's promises never disappoints us because God's love has been abundantly poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Okay, we got more information here. We need to see here from Paul that this hope, this divine thing, this guarantee to us is centered around the promises of God to us. That makes it a whole clearer picture because there's been some really bad teachings over the past 40, 50 years that have uh, just missed it by a mile regarding hope. I have hope for a Cadillac. You don't put your hope in things. Hope goes into the living God and his promise. Very important we get that. It's not a solical or a carnal hope. I hope I lose weight. I hope my flowers grow. I hope this recipe I'm cooking works out. I have had hope in all three. That's not what this hope is. Rather, on your fill in the blank number two, this biblical hope that Paul writes of is only found in the Word of God. That's the hope he speaks of, not the carnal things I would want in life. Sometimes they could be good desires. Not the fleshly things I would want in life. They could be good desires. But this is a different kind of hope. It's a thing that's a spiritual entity. Paul here is speaking of a spiritual entity. Your third fill in the blank. God's promises to us is in the Word of God. And they are an actual thing in the spirit realm that comes from Him. We have to see hope very differently. It's something that God has promised us in the Word. This kind of hope, faith can make a substance of. Not my whims, not my flowers growing, not my, but spiritual promises from the Word of God. And I've done this here many times in church. This, this Bible you have in your hand is a book of seeds. This is a seed book. You find the promises of God's Word, and you found a seed that you can put faith in that can grow in your heart. But in light of what I'm saying today, let's go a step further. These are hope seeds. They're not just seeds. They're hope seeds. They're hope seeds that will grow as I believe God for what He says. Even though my five senses ain't agreeing with it at all. Faith turns them into real spiritual plants that grow in me, in the spirit realm. These are the promises of God that Paul speaks of, that we have faith a hold of. Now, in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, Scripture we got to look at when we say this. Um, it says, for as many are, as, as many as are the promises of God. Okay, we just said that. In Christ, they are all answered yes. So through him, we say the are amen to the glory of God. You know, amen can be translated a couple different ways in the language we understand. One way it can be translated as be it done unto me. I'm in agreement, be it done unto me. So you better be careful what you say amen to. Be it done unto me. That's the promises of God for us. So um, these hope promises that we read in the Word are not maybe. They're all yes to me because I'm in Christ. Because if you, if you really analyze a lot of people's prayer life, they're begging God for things. Not believing God for things. They're not maybe to you. They're yes. Amen. Stop begging. Start believing. Amen. Otherwise, we miss 2 Corinthians here by a mile. 
We need to be believing God, not begging God. God, don't you see how I'm suffering? God, don't you see my need? That's not the issue. It's believing God. Consider, God is not moved by needs. Isn't that a strange statement? If he was moved by needs, there'd be no needs. But there's a lot of needs out there. He's moved only by faith in what he's promised. We have to start activating that. I believe you, Lord, even though I don't see it. I'm holding on to that scripture that I believe. A lot of times I'll meet folks and they want me to pray with them to agree in prayer. And I'll say, okay, well, what are you agreeing in prayer, want agreement in prayer about? And they'll mention something. And none of them, almost none of them, mention a scripture that they're believing God for. My agreement with you is not to be about your whims. It's to be about the Word of God. If you show me a scripture you're agreeing on, I can agree with you in prayer on that scripture. One brother in the Lord got this one year. He's, he's moved out of state to a different state. Anytime he ever came up to me, he would say the scripture word for word that he was believing on. Would you agree with me in prayer? I said, oh, yes. He was one of the only ones that ever got that. He listened and went like, oh. it was like revelation to him. You wanted to agree with me on the word of God? Yeah. And he would make sure he found the promise and the word to come to pass in agreement. He did real well in life. Amen. So, again here, I'm supposed to be in agreement with the Lord. I don't have to talk him into this. I don't have to talk into him granting this to me. It's my job just to believe and I'll lay a hold of it in faith and turn God's promise, his whole promise, into a substance that I can lay hold of. So my job, you know, this side of heaven is to believe in what I do not see. I believe in what he's promised. That's where hope is, and that's what I do with hope. I believe in what he said. Otherwise, what am I hoping for? If it's not in his word, I have no reason to hope for it. If it's in his word, I can find it in his word even implied, that I can believe for that. So with all this background in mind, let's take a look again at our foundation series here, Scripture, in from 1 Corinthians 13. I had you underline it. And now there remain hope confident expectation of eternal salvation. Now, interesting here, uh, especially with Amplified Bible, a lot of people when they have Bibles, they never read the introduction, which tells you what the, all the symbolism in your Bible is there for. The commas, the periods, the verse markings, blah, blah, blah. They, they're there for a purpose. With Amplified Bible, when you see a bracket, you have a bracket there, thank you. You have, see a bracket that says confident expectation of eternal salvation. That bracket means it took out of the word prior to it the original Greek meaning of that word. So, oddly enough, in the Greek here, this is the word uh, elpis, not important, E-L-P-I-S. It's a noun for hope. And how you would literally translate it into English is confident expectation. So what does hope mean here in the New Testament Greek? Confident expectation. It has to do with something unseen in the future, but I got a confident expectation of it. Not just a, gee, I hope this comes to pass. I got a confident expectation of it. That's the kind of hope here that's being uh, displayed. So this is a hope promised far beyond. I hope my flowers grow. Actually, this year they didn't, they died. That's because my wife didn't water them, it was her fault. <laughs> anyway. It's an eternal hope that's being written down here. That's the key. It's an eternal hope of what's being written down here. I got eternal hope that I'm putting my faith into. So let's go to John 3.16. You all know this. You've all been to a football game. You've seen this. Out of the Amplified. For God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world that he even gave his own, that his one and only son, begotten son, that so that whoever believes and trusts in him as Savior shall not perish, but have eternal life. Okay, we saw here in uh, 1 Corinthians 13, hope, confident expectation of eternal life. Jesus is talking here of an eternal life to have and to possess and lay a hold of. Now we have Jesus' words here. And it's a real hope promise. It's eternal life I want to lay a hold of. Every person born has everlasting life. You're going to live forever whether you like it or not. But do you have eternal life? 
the higher quality of life. In the Greek, it's called zoe. It means a higher quality of life. Ah, that's different. Zoe life, you have to do something about that and receive him as Savior. That is not in your head. That's a spiritual thing in the heart that you choose to believe. Um, so, you know, when you look at a dead body in a coffin, there is nothing I'm looking at that's going to give my five senses any encouragement about eternal life. Nothing. If I lean onto my five senses by only what I see, the evil one will use what I see to mock me, to tell me I've been deceived. There's no life beyond the grave. Can't you see it? But if the promise of eternal life has been grabbed by me in faith, then I have the testimony in me that silences the devil's lies. It's more real to me than what I see before my five senses. But if my faith is in Jesus' words, then this hope becomes mine, the hope of eternal life. I walk by faith and not by sight. You know the scripture. I walk by faith and not by sight. Once I've put my faith in Jesus' word promises to me of hope, faith then makes them real in my heart, and I know what I have. I have it. Interesting, faith could be a, a noun or a verb in Greek, which is odd. Uh, in the Greek, for the verb of hope, it's odd to translate into English. It's better implied, you can translate it hope, but it's better implied to translate it trust. How about that? Verb as a hope has to imply I'm trusting, that I'm doing the action of trusting. If I'm hoping, I got trust in you, Jesus. It's an active action on my part. I'm trusting you. My hope is now something a little bit beyond, well, maybe it will, maybe it won't happen. It's a trust. It's an active trust. So again, let's go back here to 1 Corinthians 13. 13. The verse says, hope, confident expectation of eternal salvation. As long as I am on this earth, I need faith turning this hope promise into a reality for me. Because once I'm in the presence of God, both hope and faith are not needed any longer. They've been fulfilled. All that remains is the reality of His love and that I'm living in His presence, in His love, which is beyond my comprehension of what that could be like. So here we have another verse right before verse 13 in verse 12, which tells us so much more. Paul says, for now, in this time of imperfection, we see in a mirror dimly, a blurred reflection, a riddle, an enigma. But then, when the time of perfection comes, we will see reality face to face. I will know, I, now I know in part, just in fragments, but then I will fully know fully, just as I have been fully known by God. Wow, I need hope this side of heaven, because as long as I'm in this body, I'm in a time of imperfection. You may have noticed that. <laughs> Not looking at me, thank you, looking to yourself. Remember, when you point a finger at me, you got three pointing back at you. Okay. Yeah, my body here is a time of imperfection. It looks like a blurred reflection. I read the Word of God. I don't see that in my life, but I'm believing for it. Uh, it's a blurred re reflection. I only have fragments in my mind that I'm trying to put together. My life on earth in the body too often is like a riddle or an enigma. I'm 67. I wish I knew that. I know now what I was 21 when I was young and stupid. Nobody here was young and stupid at 21. That's wonderful. I'm just, I was. Boy, oh boy, I wish I knew then what I know now. It's a riddle. It's an enigma. But boy, if it comes clearer, though, as we grow in Christ, doesn't it? But I need this hope of what I want to experience one day. But when the time of perfection is coming, then my hope of eternal salvation will not be disappointed. I have the promise one day of a new body, of a glorified body. That's the fullness of my salvation being seen. I will know him face to face, and only his love for me is going to remain. So this, therefore, is an eternal glory for the believer that is beyond our comprehension as we now live this life out in this body. In uh, Colossians chapter 1, verse 27, I have this out of the New American Standard, Christ in you, the hope of glory. 
If you look at that in the New Amplified, the hope and guarantee of realizing the glory. I like that. That hope of glory is a realizing and a guarantee of the glory that's going to be before me. So as long as we're here in this body and we're holding on to the truths of hope and the Word of God, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16 to 18. Spent a little time there as our last scripture. Uh, also New American Standard. Paul says here, Therefore do not lose heart, but though our outward person is decaying, yet our inward pers- man- person is being renewed day by day. For this momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory, far beyond all comp- comparison. While we look at the things, not do not, not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. If I can see it, it is subject to change. If you see those inconsistencies in your life that don't agree with the Word of God, they are subject to change. There is a hope promise in the Word of God that speaks contrary to it. They are subject to change. They don't have the final word. You know, when we look here, um, we do not lose heart. We do not lose heart because hope living in us keeps us from losing heart. Interesting here, though our outer person is decaying. Do you ever wonder why you count the years of your, this is really encouraging. Do you ever wonder why you count the years of your life, 20, 30, 40, 50 years? Because you're counting the years till you die. Why else would you count your age? Mortal means death doomed. Adam didn't start dying until the day he died spiritually. That's when it started recording his age. Had no reason to before that. I know that's so encouraging. You're so glad you came to church to hear that. <laughs> but that's just the point. Don't lose heart at that. Right. Inwardly, I'm being renewed day by day. Amen. The physical body is not the issue. It's the day by day renewal. Am I living my days for Christ or am I living them as the rest of this world who has no hope lives? Right. Who fear the grave? Uh, uh, Thoreau, the great poet, said the mass of men live lives of quiet desperation. What he means is the mass of humanity live in fear over the day they'll die. That's what that means. Not for the believer. Amen. She'll be absent from the body. Hey, <laughs> be present with the Lord. Amen. I can't comprehend that in my mind. I just believe it by faith this side of heaven. So even though outwardly I get no encouragement, inwardly my hope is being renewed one day at a time. And it tells us here about the momentary affliction here. It means it's momentary. In the light of eternity, it's momentary. My gosh, the things that bothered you as a kid, don't bother you today. You could care less. It's gone. There was just momentary. Hope enables me to see beyond the momentary afflictions that I see every day because I'm putting hope in the biblical promises of the Word of God that I need to know. In verse 18 here, real biblical hope means to look beyond my five senses, which limit me. If I'm going to look at this world just based on what my five senses tell me, I'm not going to get a lot of hope at all. But if I look at it through the eyes of the Word of God, through the lens of the Word of God, if these become my glasses that I see through, I'm going to have a lot of hope. I'm going to hold on to the things that really do matter, that earthly eyes could never, ever have, have brought me. So this side of heaven, we live with an eternal hope. Let's pray here before we go to communion. Father God, may the hope of glory be in us today, these days ahead as we leave here, Father, today, that Father God, truly we would be a people living out this great hope, that Father, that does not disappoint us, that Father, it's that that would fill our minds and our hearts, not the decaying world around us, but Father God, your word that can never fail us. I wish, yes, Lord, we believe in what we do not see because it's an assured hope that we have because of Jesus and the empty grave. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name.